Whenever you need to duplicate a design, templates can speed up the process. Hey, anyways, Motion comes with a ton of professionally designed templates. These save time and are handy in a pinch. Luckily for us, Motion now allows the user to create their own templates. I find that most of my templates happen to be lower thirds, probably because I use a ton of them in a single project. Back in the dark ages of Motion 2, you know, the last version, you would create your lower third, save it, and then save a duplicate every time you wanted to create a new title. With certain projects, you could find yourself with a lot of Motion projects. Now, with Motion 3, all you have to do is create a template, and I'll show you how. To save time, I've already created a lower third. You can learn to create the same lower third in my Painting with Motion tutorial. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get down to business. Currently, we have a name and title that are different sizes and font types. They are also in the same text layer. If you turn this project into a template as is, the name and title would become the same font and size once you change the current text. Seeing as how that's not cool, Let's go the extra mile to prevent this from happening. Select our top group and then click on the Add New Group button. Rename the group, title here. Make sure your group and layer names indicate their function. That way, if I give this template to another editor, they'll know to type the person's title here. Click on the Add New Group button again and change its name to Name Here. Okay. Let's get some text into the new groups. Grab the Stefan Smitty text and drag it up into the next group. While it's still selected, hit the Command and D keys to duplicate it. Drag the duplicate up to the next group. Our top group is the name, so make sure it's still highlighted and hit the F4 key to open up the inspector. Delete the title in the text editor so only the name is left. As a matter of fact, change the name to Name Here. Once in Final Cut, this will show the user where to physically type the text. Now select the text in the title group. Delete the name in the text editor, then change the text to Title Here. And we now have the name and title separated from one another. Well, look at that. Times is still here even though we deleted all of the text associated with that font. Myriad Pro? Times. Let's just quickly change the times to Myriad Pro. Alright, almost there. Let's make sure the typeface is regular. Oh, yeah, don't forget the font size while we're at it. Now we're looking good. Click on the Properties tab in the Inspector, adjust the position to Taste. This way the name will stay the Times font at 30 points in size, while the title will be Myriad Pro and 20 points in size. By doing this, we'll be able to keep our two different fonts and sizes consistent throughout the project that utilizes this template. Now all we have to do is get the template into Final Cut. Choose File and then Save as Template. Let's name this Paint Lower Third. Our next option is Theme. Notice that they're current templates that came with Motion. I find it to be the least confusing to create a new theme, so click on the New Theme button. Type the word Paint in our New Theme dialog box and click on Create. The Create QuickTime Preview makes the template play a preview when it appears in the template browser. Cool, click on Save. Let Motion work its magic and then open up Final Cut Pro. Go to the Generator pop-up menu and click on it. Fly down our list of options to Master Templates. How about that? There's Paint. Click on it so it appears in the viewer. Drag it into Track 2 of the timeline. I'll place it on top of Stefan Smitty. Double click on the lower third so it appears in the viewer. Select the Controls tab and change the name to Stefan Smitty. Okay, once that's done, change the title to Resident Artist Slash homeless person. For this tutorial, I have two clips. So let's go back up to the generator pop-up menu and get our lower third again. 
or you could just duplicate the current one on the timeline. Place it on top of your second clip like so. Double click on the second lower third so it appears in the viewer. Select the controls tab. Change the name to Stephen Ross. Then change the title to artist slash TV personality. If we click back on our first lower third, you can see that the names and titles are different from one another. And that's why templates are so cool. I mean, remember the days of creating a new project file for each lower third you needed? Well, I say good riddance. Well, that does it for lower thirds. But what about titles? Let's say that we're doing a show that features some different art museums around the world. Here I have a semi-completed title that needs a supporting image. One way to work with footage for templates is to create a drop zone. Go up to Object, New Drop Zone. You can adjust the size just like you would if it was a video clip. I'm holding down Shift to maintain the aspect ratio and the Option key to keep this in the center of my project. Hit F4 to open the Image tab in the Inspector. Here we have three options. The Drop Zone checkbox makes the object a drop zone. See how the Drop Zone text goes away when I uncheck the box? We'll delve a little deeper into that later. Next we have Fit. There are three choices in the pop-up menu. Fit, Center, and Stretch. So let's break it down. Let's say your drop zone is 720 by 486 and you're placing an image in it that's not. Fit will proportionally scale the image so it fits the dimensions of the drop zone. Center leaves the image as is while making sure it's, well, centered. Just as it sounds, Stretch stretches the image so it fits the dimensions of the drop zone. As for our last parameter, Clear, it takes the image out of the drop zone. I'm a visual guy, and I find it hard to picture my final title with a drop zone box in the layout. So let's delete it and bring in an image of the Louvre instead. I'm going to quickly adjust it so it fits neatly in our layout. All right. Hit F4 to open the Image tab in the Inspector. And this should look familiar. Notice how it has the same options as the Drop Zone. Check the Drop Zone checkbox and notice that the name of the clip appears on it in the canvas. That's because our image is now a Drop Zone. Click on the Clear button and that should look like something you've just recently seen. I'm going to undo. Everything is set and ready to go, except that right now the show's title can be edited. And gosh dang it, I don't want anyone messing with it. So select the text Museums Around the World, hit F4 to go to the text tab in the inspector. Buried below all of these options is a Publish to FCP checkbox. Unchecking this will make it so you can't edit the text in Final Cut. Save this just like we did with the lower third. This should look somewhat like the lower third did in Final Cut. Our first destination is the Louvre. Let's make the second Stefan Smitty's Art Gallery. Drag the image over to the museum well, which is the drop zone. The Louvre has now been replaced. Change the text to reflect the new image and you have a template that can easily adapt to any of your museum destinations. All right, easy enough. But notice how our new museum destination looks like it won't fit in the title safe area. We can adjust the text size. Do, 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 do. We can also adjust the text tracking, just like so. Mm, negative one looks great. Our template looks fantastic. Everything is great. But what about getting the template to another editor on a different computer? When we saved the template, it never indicated where the file was being saved. Don't worry. Hit the Command and H keys to hide Final Cut. Click on your system hard drive, username, which in my case is Smith. Then click on Library, Application Support, Final Cut Studio, Motion, and then the Templates folder. Aha! There it is.
Then all you have to do is save the folder on the desired computer in the same location as shown. And while we're on the subject of working with other editors, if you have content such as the Louvre image and the other editor doesn't, here's what you got to do. While saving the template, be sure that the collect media option is set to copy into folder. Well, there you have it. One more item in your bag of tricks to save time, thanks to one of Motion's new features. This has been yet another tutorial by Steven Smith.